BNPL is everywhere. I think this deal happened because Square bought Afterpay, the big Achilles heel of Green Sky. Growth is just not there. Firm is coming into home improvement and construction space, you betcha. Goldman buying Green Sky for $2.24 billion in an all stock deal. So, what is Green Sky? Green Sky. It's kind of like buy now, pay later, but eh, yeah, I don't know. Everyone loves this buy now, pay later term because of the Square Afterpay deal and a firm. And now B BNPL is everywhere. It's kind of that, but not really. They made their mark in the construction industry. So giving contractors, building distributors, building you know contractors a, a payment mechanism that they can give to the consumer, the homeowner to give them credit, right? Hey, I'm a contractor. I want to do this house uh, project. If I can give you better credit, then I get to do more jobs, right? So it's a win-win. And that's that's been their bread and butter. They've expanded into, into healthcare. Like here's a little brochure. You know, this is uh, one of these building contractors, kind of case study, Lansing building products. Contractors report up to a 50% increase in sales with financing offers from the Green Sky loan program. This is an older brochure. It's not BNPL because BNPL is all in vogue these days. But, you know, you're providing a loan, deferred interest plans, credit limits up to $65,000, high approval rates. Green Sky ultimately has a network of a handful of banks that are providing the actual debt and Green Sky is the intermediary. It's a very small, finite number of banks, like a handful of them. And Green Sky's actually run into some issues, which is why when we look at their stock price, it doesn't look so hot. IPO'd 2018, hit 26 bucks, and never got back there ever again. Pre-COVID, they're at like nine bucks a share. Pre-COVID. Then, you know, COVID hit, they're sub five dollars. They're sub five dollars. End of twenty twenty, right? We spent trillions and trillions of dollars. Home improvement was going crazy. That was all hitting end of twenty twenty. They're still sub five dollars a share. Big rally, right? Beginning of twenty twenty one. They go to seven, and then Goldman acquires them for you know, like eleven and change. So weird, right? Roughly. $2.2 billion deal. And you look at their volumes. Their volumes are not that far off from a firm. What's a firm valued at? $29 billion. So more than 10x. So let's compare these. A firm doing for the quarter, $261 million in revenue. They're actually losing money also. So they're doing $261 million in revenue. Green Sky did 136 million in revenue, 261 to 136. So it's almost half, but 2 billion versus 29 billion. 2 billion, 29 billion, half the revenue. What gives? You look at the GMV, same kind of story. We're, we're not talking uh, a firm doing over 10x the volume than a green sky. So the volumes of a green sky, the revenue of a green sky, what, half of a firm? But a firm is 14, 15 times the value, 14 times the value of green sky? How does that make any sense? Well, as we've seen with all of these tech companies, and yes, these are fintech companies, uh, it's all about growth. And that is the big Achilles heel of Green Sky. The growth is just not there. That's really been their big issue. So historical transaction volumes, right? It's actually decreasing, not, not decreasing pre-COVID. Yes, it decreased and then started to increase, uh, you know, again, home improvements are by far their biggest vertical. So 1.6 billion and change in Q3 2019 goes down to less than 1.5 in Q4. Goes down okay in Q1, but you know some of that was um, COVID related, so you know hard to to hold them to that one. But it was already declining pre-COVID, and that very much so coincides with the decline in the stock price, right? These are 
valued like tech companies because they're financial tech companies. You need the growth. So when Green Sky is reporting, yeah, we did uh, um, 136 million in revenue. Second quarter transaction volume grew by 14% year over year. Those aren't big numbers, right? Those, you want to know what a firm's revenue growth number was? 71%, right? 14%, 71%. That is what all of these tech companies are valued on is the growth. You got a firm doing deals here, Home Advisor, owned by Angie's List, which is a home services marketplace. So Home Advisor partners with the firm. This is December 2020. So a firm is coming into the home improvement and construction space. You betcha. Square and Afterpay are going to be absolutely. And that's the real gotcha in all of this. They're buying a, a business that has scale, but is struggling to grow. And if Goldman can make this thing grow, then yeah. The deal is a no-brainer. Before I get to that, is the timing a little peculiar? Square announced they're buying Afterpay August 1st. Now, it's Goldman. Goldman knows this stuff before it gets announced. Um, So I think this deal happened because Square bought Afterpay and because they got some FOMO and because they said, we need a buy now, pay later play. Goldman, I'd say maybe they were even involved. You know, any kind of deal this size after pay, Goldman would probably be involved in that, right? You know, the banker is going to try and drum up the most uh, interest and, and, and jack up the price. The board has a fiduciary duty at after pay to make sure they got the highest price for the company, right? So it's not like Square is the only one that knows this deal is going down. Goldman probably had an option to buy it at the very least. If they didn't, they definitely knew about it through the grapevine because it's Goldman Sachs. And I think then they set their people into motion to go and do their own BNPL play. That led them to Green Sky. Much cheaper, similar type of technology, strong foothold in construction, which is big and the money just keeps flowing, so there's going to be more activity there. But, you know, has Goldman really been able to be successful with Marcus? And uh, the verdict is still out. I'm a little skeptical, to be frank. What is Marcus? Goldman Sachs bought GE's, GE Capital's online business um, back in 2015 and turned it into Marcus, right? So you could now have, as a, as a consumer... Um, that didn't have millions and millions of dollars to to invest with Goldman. Um, now you could just have a savings account. And if you remember, a few years ago, Marcus was doing insane, insane interest rates, like 2.15%. Maybe it was even up to 2.5% at times, right? 2.5% just to put your money there. It's just insane. And then it dropped and then it dropped and now it's basically nothing because the Fed interest rate is, is, is also basically nothing. Yeah, they got more and more savings, but they were paying for it, bleeding money to go get all these deposits into Marcus. They've done deals with, with Amazon to, to lend to Amazon's uh, merchants. They've done, uh, they, they paid whew, out the you know what to do the deal with the Apple card. They have all these really smart, tech strategy people, you know, that are supposed to know what to do. And Goldman has to be the smartest person in the room. And man, are they paying for it? But is it working? Mm, I don't really know. If it was working, would the leaders of the division leave? Two top leaders from its Marcus consumer unit defecting to a new Walmart venture. Mere weeks after they were elevated into the top. Lots of exodus. What is Goldman really going to do to make this thing magically grow again? Yeah, they can bring more capital. And yes, Green Sky did have one of their banks leave, uh, which is kind of an issue. But maybe they can help them expand into new verticals. Green Sky was trying to expand into healthcare, for example, pre-COVID. But Yeah, maybe Goldman can just dump more money into the thing, but is that really going to work? As opposed to saying, what's the next thing on the horizon? 
I'll give you an example. This company, I love this company. Um, there's other ones like this, but this is the leader. This is Resolve Pay. Guess where they came out of these founders? Oh, oh, a firm called a firm. They have raised a little under $100 million in equity capital. This is called a trade finance business. Uh, grow faster with modern B2B payments and net terms. Resolve allows B2B manufacturers and wholesalers to get paid upfront, while their business customers can pay in 30, 60, or 90 days for a complete net terms and credit management solution. You're a small retailer. You can buy your stuff. You can start selling it. You can return it all within 59 days. Let's say you bought a bunch of stuff and it wasn't selling as, you, as fast as you thought it was going to sell. You have now not paid a dime in cash flow for these goods. Even though you can start selling them, you can test the market to see how well the stuff is selling and then you can return excess flows. No questions asked. Big deal. For a small retailer, giving the buying power and the, the purchasing leverage that a Macy's would typically command with merchants, right? Macy's can overbuy and then just ship it back to the seller uh, and say, hey, you got to refund us for this stuff. It didn't sell like we thought or whatever, right? Macy's gets crazy payment terms. That's a key part, this um, net terms B2B payments uh, model. And this Resolve Pay, I love this company, right? To me, is this thing big? Is it going to be a big splash? Is it Goldman doing a deal with Apple? Um, is it Goldman doing a deal with Amazon? No, but it, it's Goldman buying Resolve Pay for like a few hundred million dollars. It's not a big splash. It's not a multi-billion dollar deal. It's, but you want to know what? In those big multi-billion dollar deals, Goldman, yeah, you're big, but you don't have much leverage with an Apple or an Amazon. Sorry to break it to you, buddy. And now you just spent billions of dollars again on something that is struggling to grow, you haven't really been able, you've been able to go after the big high-flying deals and catch a lot of press, but you're burning money. You're like lighting money on fire. It catches the headlines. I just don't know if it's the best business strategy. Uh, so we'll see. See where the, the verdict lands. I do wish that Goldman is successful because I, I am a fan for the incumbents and in traditional businesses. Just not sure it's necessarily the best tact and path for them to go down. Hi, I'm Alex. Thanks for watching the show. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, but even better, make sure to follow us on Odyssey, follow us on Rumble, and text us 203-646-5159. Text the word Monopoly. You'll be subscribed. You'll get updates about when we're going live, our latest videos, and we'll send you even a little goodie bag. And in the event that we all get banned from big tech, we'll still be connected.